So, Sunday was massive in regards to Phantom Liberty news. Not only did we get the drop of the official trailer, but we also got a ton of hands-on gameplay footage from people who got to play it at Summer Games Fest and a bunch more info on the online store. In this video, I'll be breaking down every obscure detail I noticed in the Phantom Liberty trailer in order to try and draw a few more conclusions. And whilst I won't be delving into the gameplay footage directly today, there's a few bits in there that'll inform theories I have from the trailer. So, without further ado, let's get to it. There's got to be a way out of this. Johnny. I'm dying. There's nothing can stop that. So, we start off flying in an AV towards Japantown from, I guess, Kabuki, and now quite when this is supposed to take place, I'm not sure, but as I've said before, my guess is that it'll be sometime after the parade and stuff with the Voodoo Boys, but before the point of no return. Now, I did entertain the theory that this could be after whichever of the endings, but based on Johnny still being there and those going so many different ways, I think doing that would kind of defeat the point of the main story. So, yeah, this is going to be one big old tangent before the end, I guess. V. It's really nice to hear that classic ringtone there. Like, in this moment, it's such a sign of hope to both V and, I guess, us. My name is Songbird. I'm an NUS intelligence analyst. So, Songbird is going to be a huge part of Phantom Liberty, we know that, and I have a pretty big theory as to not necessarily who she is, but the nature of what she is, which I'll dive into at the end of breaking down this trailer. I know about the bomb ticking in your head. And I can save your life. So V's having another brain spasm, seemingly, and something I drew parallels to here was just how similar it looks to the one we have underwater during Pyramid Song. What we haven't seen before, though, is that this is affecting Johnny. And this, again, will lead into my idea a bit about Songbird. And I can save your life. What's the catch? I need you to get to Dogtown. Dogtown is of course the expanded region of Pacifica situated between Coast View and West Wind Estates, as well as the Southern Badlands. Best view we get into the goings on in there in the main game is during this convo with Placide. Attention all Dogtown residents. And that's a big projection of a dude named Kurt Hansen. Now it looks like he's in charge around the combat zone and is head of this faction called Barguest. Now from gameplay reveals we know that Barguest is the security force within the combat zone, replacing the NCPD. But also Barguests are the hounds of the Wild Hunt in the Witcher franchise. Now, I love it when CDPR reuse names from The Witcher. They did it with the Arendite car, obviously, but it's never quite been done to this capacity before. Also, if you check the bonuses we'll be getting with Phantom Liberty in the store, we'll see that owners of The Witcher 3 are going to be given exclusive access to an actual Witcher sword, Gwynblaith in 2077. I can't wait to use that thing to be deflecting bullets like it's my lightsaber, because yes, combat is getting a full overhaul, and using blades to deflect bullets is going to be a part of that, but I'll look into that more in another video. Back to the trailer. The president managed to crash her Space Force One into our humble district. Okay, so of course we've known since the first teaser that something is going to crash in Dogtown and we now have confirmation that this is Rosalind Myers Space Force One. This not only confirms that this woman is indeed Rosalind Myers, president of the NUSA, but also that unsurprisingly presidents fly in 2077 via what is presumably low altitude space travel. Man's got a thousand and one reasons to want Myers as a hostage. A close up of a Barguest soldier there, I'm starting to feel like these guys are ex Militech and now work under Kurt Hansen, because seriously, all their tech and vehicles is looking pretty similar to Militech if you ask me. And that's a close up of Hansen. Now, I've talked in other videos about this character called the General being teased to occupy Dogtown. We can read this on a shard during the Nina Chilo scanner hustle. And now, given the whole Barguest military thing and this guy looking very much like a classic general. General villain, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Kurt Hansen is the general. Now, I may be wrong, there may be other military factions warring in this space, but currently I feel pretty safe in assuming that. Sleeper agents, time to wake them up. So NUSA is tossing us back into the fray, huh? Now, the way we see Idris Elba as we hear that line, it kind of leads me to question whether he's been in some form of hibernation, which could make sense. I mean, the NUSA could have a spy force that wake up when needed, literally. But I think what's more likely is that these guys were indefinitely stood down and are only now being called back into the field. And clearly, Idris isn't the only agent we're going to be meeting here. There's also this woman and possibly others. Maybe even with the whole spy thriller thing, 
killing an entire ring of spies. Stay sharp. We're in the wolf's den now. Ah, the wolf's den. Get it? Because Barguest. I don't know if that was intentional, but I'm sure it was. And that is a nice shot of the stadium, with classic cyberpunk littering the thing with ads. Yep, even in Dogtown, people are still pushed with relentless consumerism conditioning. This one-winged fallen angel is also cool, and I feel like that's almost a wider metaphor for the term Phantom Liberty. Like, it's got a wing, it's got the illusion that it could fly away, but with only one, it actually can't do that. It just feels like maybe it could. I don't know, maybe I'm grasping with straws at that, but they do put a lot of effort into everything they do in their games, so who knows? Underwater stuff looks cool, but I'm going to assume this is part of a scripted event and we won't be getting tons more underwater levels because honestly, I feel like that would slow the game up a lot. This is cyberpunk after all, not subnautica. But having little bits like this swimming through crevices is a nice addition to the whole spy espionage type vibe. Get Myers out of there. Time to evac. Her safety is the top priority. And of course, we fight our way to Space Force 1, break in, and extract Myers. We've seen this from the gameplay footage, and by the sounds, this is going to be the first couple hours of the game, kicking it all off with a bang before we get into the more spy, Bond-type nature of the DLC. That is an NUSA-branded Kyubi assault rifle. They were added back in 1.6 and are manufactured by Tsunami Defense Systems. It makes me hope that we'll actually get customizable skins for weapons now, like different brandings for different factions, say. They catch us out here, we're dead. Wait. So obviously that big mech thing is about to jump out from under the tarpaulin, but first, on those crates, we can not only see the Barguest prints, but also an emblem of a hound. Nice touch. Hear that? God almighty! It's moving! So we clearly get separated from Myers here, and I assume this is going to go one of two ways. Either we have to fight the big laser beam mech thing now, or more likely we have to escape. And then I'm going to guess later we get access to a weapon which can fire a similar laser beam and is powerful enough to take down this thing. Though I'd assume any weapon we get of that power though is going to operate like the Mark 31 HMG, i.e. you can rip it off turrets and use it, but you can't store it in your inventory. Someone ratted us out. You know, V, treason ain't ever black and white. Someone ratted us out. Now, I'm not sure if this is in reference to what just happened, because honestly, that split from Myers just seems to have been sheer bad luck. But I think this DLC is going to have a lot more choices and a lot more narrative consequence. You're going to have to choose who to trust and who not to. That's kind of what it's sounding like from the info we got from Playdays. Also, Idris Elba's wearing like this pendant thing. Now, I might do more of a general lore dive into all of this in a future video and try to establish what this is, but at a guess, it's some sort of logo for his sleeper agent organization the FIA. It's a charade, V. Wherever she goes, people get hurt. Bodies drop. Now, with face-changing tech, here's to hoping we get to disguise ourselves as other characters and cause a bit of chaos that way. Hell, it'd be cool if this could factor back into the main game as well. Not massively, of course, but maybe the odd mission could have the added option now of disguising ourselves as somebody else. Who knows? And there's Songbird swearing allegiance to the NUSA. Now, it's been confirmed that we can also choose to do this or not pretty early into the DLC, and whether or not we do is going to trigger different responses from Johnny. You know, taking that oath. Bad idea. Also, this look Myers gives here makes her out to have a bit more of a villain side. Though this being cyberpunk and a spy thriller DLC, I'm going to assume all characters involved in this have hidden motives and agendas. If or when we do have to choose sides, then it's probably going to be a lesser of two evils thing, because honestly, having one outright good option sometimes stops people from experiencing everything else. Just want what Songbird promised me. That looks like a coin we get for taking the oath, I believe. Looks very NUSA too, if we zoom in. The cure. The situation has changed. This faction that we're meeting with Reed is interesting. They look military, of course, so maybe this is like the FIA military, Solomon's organization. And clearly here, he's looking into the back of the car towards somebody else. Myers? Songbird? Who knows? You need to know if you're with me. 
Now, I'm really glad that Max Tack are finally going to have more of a presence in this game. Now, they show up a bit in the original game, but I'm pretty sure now they're going to rock up every time you hit a high wanted level as part of the law enforcement overhaul. In fact, that's probably just a 1.7 feature, so we'll hopefully see that before Phantom Liberty even. And with the situation changing, Idris is now no longer wearing that emblem, but instead a ring. Now, whether this has any significance, I don't know. But what I am fairly certain of is that this DLC is going to have multiple endings. I very much believe that we'll be able to walk out of this one with Solomon as an ally, or alternatively, very much an enemy. Illusion of freedom draws in the desperate. I'm gonna guess this is the Voodoo Boys again, though after how things went last time, what with us potentially killing most of them, I'm also gonna say this guy is either a defector or there's a splinter group operating out in Dogtown. Equally, he could just be a runner dude and not connected to the Voodoo Boys at all. At any rate, that would make a lot more sense as to why we're just willingly jacking into something that he's just handed us. Because last time the Voodoo Boys did that to us, we almost died. And it looks not only here like Songbird has a fully mech body, that also leads into my theory which we'll discuss in a minute, but also that we'll be going to some sort of fancy gala. Now, on the map, up in North Oak, there's this large building which we can't access in the main game. Presumably, it'll be made use of in Phantom Liberty, else why is it there at all? And this building in the trailer does very much fit that North Oak vibe. And it's also the right sort of size, from what I can see on the map. Pick your truth, me. Come on. That is a Unity pistol, the classic weapon V uses in cutscenes, but we've now got this underbarrel modification. Now, in the gameplay, we can see that weapons have been entirely overhauled in this regard. And looking at footage, it appears as though this may simply be a visualization of the weapon mods themselves. Also, that may very well be a new silencer, too. Got iron in your head. Gotta put it to someone's head. Pull the trigger. And we're in a Ripidoc clinic. No doubt the DLC will be adding new Ripidocs and cyberware. In fact, I've heard they're finally going to be implementing a system of debuffs when you go overboard on installing cyberware. No longer are we going to be the most powerful Chroma who ever existed and completely immune to cyberpsychosis. So it's going to be fun balancing new builds with that mechanic brought into the fold. So clearly Kurt, possibly the general, is going to be a villain here, with stabbing us through the hand a particularly unfriendly thing to do. Now, maybe we can just have a puff of an inhaler and make friends, but I don't know, with Myers, Solomon Reed, Songbird, a ton of characters already, keeping this guy as a straight up villain is what I feel like they'll probably be doing here, though it'd be cool if we could side with him as well. Now that is definitely a new scope. In fact, I think we saw this one back in the first trailer. Hopefully they add quite a few new scopes in this game, because honestly, after reviewing all the current ones, most of them are kind of difficult to see through. This one looks good though. So of course the chopper's about to hit here, but this looks like some kind of new robot just there. Now we know Myers has some white robot bodyguard, and this to me looks like a darker equivalent of those. Maybe used by Solomon Reed's faction perhaps? I think a lot of the combat zone is going to be overgrown like this, that kind of post-apocalyptic, reclaimed by nature, Last of Us type vibe. It's going to add a whole new flavour to Night City, and I'm very excited for it. I don't do any Direct showcase of vehicle combat in the combat zone there, looking very cool. And again, that should be a part of 1.7, so we'll also be experiencing that before Phantom Liberty, I guess. Thing into now, I think looking at this, the people watching, the support struts behind, this is some sort of performance, possibly taking place up in that big big North Oak mansion again. But soon, I'll die. And another shot of the big mech which chased us earlier. I have no idea how we survived this, maybe we don't. Maybe this is a death cutscene if the thing catches us. I mean, even the text is different. It's got this more plain steel sheen to it. I'm guessing that reflects the less vibrant and more gritty vibe that they're going for in this DLC. And finally, we can see on V's arm here, she's also now wearing an NUSA badge type thing. So maybe we'll be getting to customize clothes a little, or maybe we'll be simply getting some NUSA branded clothing. Either way, very cool. So that was everything I got from the two and a half minute trailer, but there's a ton more stuff to break down from Playdays footage, which I'll have to leave for another video. But one theory, I do want to briefly discuss, because I've seen a lot of evidence for this one, is just who, or what, Songbird is. So, from what I can tell, Songbird is, at least partly, a construct. This has been thrown around quite a bit already, but makes more and more sense the more I think about it. She has the ability to deal with the Silverhand construct, and in the gameplay reveal footage, we can quite clearly see when Space Force 1 is about to land, she completely vanishes. Different glitch effect to Silverhand, but still, she clearly wasn't there in the flesh. By the sounds of it even, she was on board Space Force 1. Now, this could just be some advanced form of holocalling, but from the fact that the gameplay footage shows only my 
Myers is left alive on board Space Force One, that would make Songbird a disembodied entity. In fact, look closely at the info on the call with her, and above her name it reads Relic Packet 32. So my guess is the NUSA have already figured out how to create constructs themselves, as well as how to have them as onboard AI systems which people can slot inside their heads. Kind of like Johnny Silverhand, just without it overwriting your own personality. The number 32 also suggests that Songbird is far from the only construct the NUSA have in this format. The fact that Johnny is affected here in the trailer also leads me to theorise that Songbird hijacks our biochip, and thus we see her in this clip in the same way we often view Silverhand. But then, later in the trailer, up at the mansion, she appears there in the flesh with a mecked up body, and we clearly physically touch her. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that this isn't her original body, but one that she downloaded into after becoming a construct at some given point. Hell, her swearing an oath here may even be a flashback to when she had an organic body. Now, Cyberpunk has already gone heavily in on the idea of making engram copies of people since the beginning, but something I'd be curious to see is an engram AI coexisting alongside the original copy of that person. What if Songbird is a legion of AI constructs even, derived from one original person, but now multiple different people? I don't want to theorise much further than that without evidence, but what I will say is that if this is true, if Songbird is another form of construct like Johnny Silverhand, one that can seemingly more freely interface with a host without fully overwriting their mind, then this leads me to a simple conclusion for the new ending. V becomes a construct similar to Songbird, and then, much like she has seemingly downloaded back into a mechanised body, we simply do the same. Hell, even the title there, Phantom Liberty, makes sense. You're freed from the confines of a dying body, but you're also a phantom, disembodied lines of code. This might lead to an ending similar to when we enter Mikoshi, but I guess objectively better, surely. That being said, I'm strongly assuming that we won't be getting an ending that is out and out better than the original ones. In this new ending slash endings, there's got to be a similar measure of overall bittersweetness. Maybe we survive and get a new body, hell, maybe even Johnny gets to survive too and keep our old one, but then we get sworn into eternal servitude to the NUSA. No leaving with Pan Am, no leading the afterlife, no freedom. I don't know, that's my two cents on this, and I'll be breaking down a lot more Phantom Liberty stuff in the coming months. Now, ranking videos I have planned are going to be taking a back seat until the release of Phantom Liberty, since I guess they're all going to need redoing now anyway, but I do have some story-based deep dives to come, as well as the remaining episodes of the gig series, since I'm guessing they'll be left more untouched by 1.7 and Phantom Liberty. Huge thanks as always to my patrons whose names are on screen now, and thank you for watching. Comment below any other hidden details you've seen or heard about Phantom Phantom Liberty, I'm Sam Brown, and I'll see you very soon in another video.